In today's video, why you sheeted a big breakfast if you want to be shredded. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Arbella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we got a special topic. I got my man Steve here. What's up, Steve? Hi. So today, you know it's science with Steve. So Steve is going to discuss the science behind something that came out in mass. If you guys aren't already familiar with mass, the monthly application and strength sport every month, it's a wonderful periodical that comes out and discusses current research and what they found and what its implications are. Uh, and it's created by some amazing people. I'm going to link it below for you guys to go check it out. So Steve, talk a little bit about um, what this review actually discussed. What was this study about? So what the study was looking at was the post energy expenditure based off of eating the vast majority of your calories for breakfast or for dinner. So what they were doing is they were feeding 69% of the total daily calories in one meal. That's right, 69%. <laughs> and that was the majority of their food. And then they essentially would get 20% for their lunch and the rest at the other meal, so. That's 11% for you dummies. Yeah. <laughs> So you would get either a giant breakfast or a giant dinner and what they would do is they would look at how many calories you burned before the meal and they were doing gas exchange so they would put a mask on you and look at how many calories you were burning based on your CO2 expenditure and then they would do that again post meal and throughout the day a few times and look at okay well who has a higher we're going to call it a postprandial energy expenditure. Yeah, that means after the meal. And what they found was that based on how they made those measurements, people eating more at breakfast burned more calories after that meal than the people at dinner. What I really liked about this study was that they, they did a few things consistently. So everybody ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the same time, right? So yes. they really tried to control as many variables possible. So they had everybody eating breakfast at 9 a.m., lunch at 2 p.m., dinner at 7 p.m. So they had a 14-hour window everybody before their breakfast. Now the group that was eating 11% of their calories at breakfast, what I found interesting and, and, and it was discussed in kind of the post facts was that this group typically was hungrier throughout the day um, and they were more craving kind of some sweets. Whereas the group that ate 69% of their total calories in breakfast, that's a big breakfast, a big portion of your calories, yeah. they had less cravings throughout the day. So to me, the energy expenditure, which you said is flawed, so we're gonna discuss why, um, but cravings is a big part of it, especially amongst this group of people because there were 16 men that were in good shape. They were healthy, but they were also not athletes. So we're not talking about a population of people that are going in and doing bodybuilding, um, but we're talking about a, a population of people that are just a healthy group of men in general. So the big takeaway from this is what, Steve? What did the energy expenditure look like in your mind? When I see that, I see the same kind of energy expenditure after both meals in terms of total energy expenditure. So whether you eat in the morning or whether you eat at night, it's gonna be the same. The reason that you're probably seeing a difference in energy expenditure here is how they measured it. They took the pre-breakfast meal, so after an entire night of not eating or drinking and sleeping and doing nothing, and then the difference between that and the larger dinner. Larger dinner, you still had a breakfast, you still had a lunch, you've still been awake, and there's gonna be differences physiologically speaking based on your circadian rhythm. So them just comparing pre versus post energy expenditure from the nutritional invention, maybe not the best in terms of total body weight. However, looking at things like hunger, ability to stay to adhere to your diet and some other things, there might still be some really cool things that we can extrapolate from a larger meal earlier in the day. Yeah, and I think from my personal experience, you know, experimenting with, you know, this idea of fasting or eating on a certain schedule, I certainly find that when I give myself a schedule to stick to, uh, my digestion becomes a lot more predictable, um, my hunger signals become a lot more predictable. And, and so really, do I think that everybody needs to eat a huge breakfast? Well, absolutely not. A lot of it just depends on what your day is like, what your energy expenditure is like at certain times of the day. But I do think, and this is something that's kind of emerging in my mind is that there is a value in taking large amounts of time not eating, okay? So these people were all taking 14 hours between meals. Yes. Um, and that's something that I'll typically do because, you know, I'll have my dinner and I get up and I train in, in, early. So in your mind, what was the biggest takeaway from this study? Was it the fact that less hunger throughout the day? So perhaps we should kind of temper our eating or was there something that specifically spoke to you? So for me, I think it's all about adherence. Um, if we're talking about maintaining weight, losing weight, making body composition improvements, it's all about what works over the long term to help us to stay consistent and successful. Now, if for any individual that means 
taking a long period overnight or some time before you know you have breakfast and eating more in the morning so that you're managing your hunger signaling that's awesome and that works perfect for other people that might not be the case I have plenty of clients where I've tried to get them to eat more earlier on in the day and it just gets them off track they end up overeating at night anyways um, and it doesn't work for them so we can definitely take some things here and there are, I think are big benefits in terms of just being active throughout the day, having food in your system, the way that your body deals with big meals um, when you still have activity going on versus when you're at rest all day. Yes, absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's all about were you able to hit your macronutrient needs and targets on a consistent basis from day to day. Yeah, so the big takeaway here is that what is still most important is energy balance. And what the takeaway from this study was, these were not athletes, these were not people that are typically tracking their calories. So what was interesting was, if you take someone that doesn't really wanna track their calories, and they perhaps want to put things slightly in their favor, maybe eating a bigger meal early in the day might have them snacking less and hungrier less later in the evening, therefore, by default, their energy expenditure is going to be a little bit different, okay? They're going to be taking in a few less calories, okay? And perhaps, maybe they'll burn a few more throughout the day just because they're taking in less. And ultimately, it does not matter if you want to lose weight or gain weight. You have to change your energy balance. What does that look like for everybody? It's going to be different. Is fasting beneficial? Intermittent fasting? For some people, absolutely. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, so I love the idea of everybody finding what works for them. Um, and I think this is a, a new era of nutrition where, you know, we're taking a look at the big picture and understanding that, you know, we have so many individual differences. There's no reason why we can't have individual approaches yeah. to nutrition with with a sound basis in protein intake, carbohydrate intake, fat intake, uh, you know, meal timing, yeah. fasting, whatever works for you, but within these boundaries. Giving a simple answer can be awesome because it will definitely yeah. be a really nice baseline for the vast majority of people. But remember, there's always, always an exception to the rule. And you're such an individual, try things out. Don't accept things as fact and dogma. You are going to be the, the best person to decide what's best for you. All right, guys, that's going to be it. Check out Steve on Instagram and YouTube as well, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.